Hey everyone, so I wanted to give a brief tutorial on how to read a t-table in order to find a p-value. So if you've seen the previous video on how to find a p-value given a z-table, you're going to see that the process is extremely similar and that at this point we're going to have a t-test statistic that we have already calculated and given that and what's different in this one versus the z-tables is that we have degrees of freedom, we're going to simply blend those two aspects together and then find an associated p-value. So the way we do that is we start by looking at the table and see how it's organized where on the column right here we have degrees of freedom going up and down so you can see the degrees of freedom get higher and higher as you go down the column and all degrees of freedom is is simply n minus 1 where n is the number of things that you're sampling in a sample for instance if I I don't know flipped a coin 10 times to see the probability that I landed on heads versus tails I trialed 10 coin flips, thus my n would equal 10, thus my degrees of freedom would be 10 minus 1 or 9. So simply given your problem, you're going to identify your degrees of freedom, and then at this point, like I said, you have already found a t-test statistic. So what's going on here is that given your degrees of freedom, you're going to look for your t-test statistic in the middle of this chart right here, and then once you find that test statistic in the middle of the chart, or at least where it's close to, you're going to look at the associated p-values at the top of the chart, which are all of these right here you're going to look towards those and then those are going to be your p-values so keep in mind you're not going to be able to find an exact p-value using this method but only a range of p-values but usually the reason you're doing this is so that you can compare it to some alpha value so you can accept or reject a hypothesis which if you haven't gotten to that yet don't worry but long story short all you need to know is a range a lot of the time so this is perfectly acceptable so let's just go through a quick example so let's say I had a t-test statistic valued at 1.50 so I went ahead and did that calculation and I discovered it to be 1.5 and then I also discovered that my degrees of freedom are going to be 14 in which case I know that my n must have been 15 because it's n minus 1 so I have 1.5 as my test statistic at uh, 14 degrees of freedom so the way I'm going to read this is simply look for my degrees of freedom to start with and I can see here is my 14 and then at that 14 degrees of freedom I'm just going to read across that row right there and I'm going to try and find my 1.5 so keep in mind I'm probably not going to find that exact value right there but I can find what it falls between and then based off of that tell you what the p-value is so here I am at 14 and I'm just going to keep looking to the right further and further to the right until I find 1.5 so 0.6 692, 0 0.868, I need to keep going higher. You can see that I get to 1.345, so I'm not quite there. And then right on the next number, it jumps to 1.716. So you can see that my 1.5 would be somewhere in between these two values right here. So the way you analyze that is you go, okay, well, I know that my t-test statistic is somewhere right here. So that must mean that my p-value is somewhere in between 0.05 and 0 0.1. So at that point, what you would actually say is regarding your p-value is that 0 0.05 is less than my p-value, which is less than 0 0.1. So I don't know the exact value of it, but I do know that on a number line, if I were to have a number line right here, where I have 0 0.05 on the lower end and 0 0.1 on the upper end, my p-value is somewhere in between right there. So I can make that conclusion, and that's going to be my p-value. So one last thing I want to point out is that many a trap that many of us fall into when we're trying to find what the p-value is and kind of how we write it out right here as far as 0.05, less than p-value, less than 0.01, what I don't want you to do is to go, okay, I know that my t-test statistic is somewhere right here, so I'm just going to go up and then just shove the word p-value between that 0.1 and that 0.05, meaning that if I were to write it out, what many of us might end up writing is, okay, 0 0.1 less than p-value less than 0 0.05 because that's the way that the chart's oriented. So for you to go up and go, okay, well the p-value is in between those two numbers, I don't mean that it's literally sandwiched between those two numbers and that's how you need to set up your uh, greater than less than because think about it, that wouldn't make sense if we had a number. So we don't know what the p-value is, but what I know is that I have 0.01 here, I'm sorry, 0 0.1 right here and I have 0 0.05 down here. So what this would tell me is that I have a number that is greater than 0.1, hence the p-value greater than 0.1 right here. And I also have a number that is less than 0.05, and these two things are the same number. 
that is impossible to happen. So what I don't want you to do is just to put p-value in between those two numbers because that's the way that charts oriented. Actually read it out on a number line just like how we did right here. Understand that p the p-value is in between those two numbers. So that means it must be greater than the smaller number and less than the greater number. So don't want to make this drag on too long but I hope that helps you just sort of organize how to read the t-value and find your associated p-value. So thank you very much.